Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. In today's video, we're talking about the Azure Integration Services series um, of where to use what. And today we're going to talk about Service Bus versus Event Grid. So both services have been around on Azure for quite a few years now. Um, they're very popular services and the target audience for each um, would be slightly different. So service bus would really be a case that i need reliable durable message broker and i would be doing something like processing high value financial transactions um processing orders that kind of thing with event grid really what i'm trying to build is a solution where there's a notification that something's changed and i can build solutions that react to those changes they're the they're the fundamental differences about where you would be coming to these two services. Now, in terms of use cases with Service Bus, we've got things like Publish Subscribe. We're doing durable messaging, so we want our uh, messages to be persisted on the message broker until we come and get them. And we're usually dealing with transactional messages that have a high value. With Event Grid, we're really looking at event grid, uh, sorry, event driven reactive programming. That seems particularly difficult to say this evening for some reason. Um, one of the things that's similar between the two is you can implement publish subscribe messaging with both of them. And it's um, it's a little bit more advanced, I guess, in a way with Event Grid. So Service Bus, you're really looking at properties on a message. Event Grid, you can, you can actually inspect the body data a little bit. So there's a subtle difference there. Um, the event grid normally the notification would be just saying here's a pointer to some some record in the system or to some data that's been changed go and get the data whereas service bus is really about um here's the data we want you to process so the key differences as we get into the two technologies terminology wise service bus is really about Here's some data, go and do something with it. Whereas event grid is something's changed, go and find the data and do something with it. The service bus really went, we're looking at this peak lock delete pattern. So we'd see there was a message on the queue, we'd go and read it, we'd do something with it. If we're happy, that message is locked, by the way, when we're reading it and processing it. If we're happy with the message, we'd then delete it. You can also do um, read and delete. So we're just looking over here. If you want to delete it at the same time, it's a little bit quicker to do that. But the trade off is that you lose the durability if there was a problem processing the message. So if you do peak lock delete, you can implement retries. So you could try again if there was a problem processing the message, um, which you can't really do with read and delete. Now, when it comes to receiving messages, there's some, some differences here. So the biggest one is that um, Event Grid has this push pattern. So Service Bus, you're always pulling a message from a queue. With um, Event Grid, the notification hits an Event Grid topic, and that then pushes to a, a destination. So you can push it to a webhook, to a function, an event hub, something like that. Now. Just be aware, recently um, it was announced that Event Grid's going to support a pull pattern as well. So you can um, pull from a, from a subscription, which is something you couldn't do up until quite recently. So that gives it the option to have something a little bit like Service Bus, whereas at the minute um, you, your only option is to pull from Service Bus. Now, the, I mentioned both can support the pub sub pattern. Um, each message is read once and completed once on um, Service Bus, unless there's a retry. On Service Bus, you've got GMS support, whereas with Event Grid, it's really MQTT and HTTP based messaging. Um, the Service Bus also supports these features like um, sessions and duplicate detection. So if you if you're getting um, duplicates from a system you can configure it so you wouldn't process those duplicates and you can also have a series of messages that can be treated as a group within a session the overlaps so we've got uh, the concept of a sender and a receiver we've got the concept of fan out and publish subscribe so i think i've copied that from another slide that shouldn't be there um 
so you can do fan out in pub sub on both of these um the the service bus supports amqp my slide here i apologize my slide's terrible so that should be up there um the dead letter concepts um an overlap that both of them have dead letter in however there is a difference so service bus really has an internal dead letter capability where if you can't process a message and you exhaust your retries it goes to the dead letter queue you can then process that or move it back to the main queue with um, event grade dead letter is really about saving the message to a storage account if it couldn't be processed so it means you don't lose the event but you have to do a lot of the hard work about how you're going to process the message um, and what you're going to do with it now i'm just going to do a little bit of a call out here actually um so serverless 360 who you'll occasionally see me um do videos about and do advisory to they've been building some features around dead letter processing from event grade to help with some of the challenges there so there's an element of having to roll your own solution to reprocess from dead letters now what i'd like to do is take a look at a couple of examples um so here's a an example where we're using the event grade so We've got a, a website over here where a user's uploading files, they get saved to a storage account. Now, there's different types of um, event grid topics. So this, this is one of the things, um, it's a little bit of a difference in service bus and event grid. So service bus has a namespace, which contains queues and topics. Event grid, you've got different types. So you can have an event grid domain is similar to a service bus namespace um, in terms of like you know the structure of it so you've got this namespace with multiple topics multiple subscriptions but you also have other types of event grid topics so you can have a system topic which would be this one here where this has got an out-of-the-box ability to listen to storage events so this is the one where you can get notifications of events happening in Azure, so it would hit a system topic and you can do something with it. You've got uh, the event grid domains much more around your own custom events, and you've got a custom topic, which would be a one-off topic um, for your custom events, but a domain allows you to have multiple topics. And there's, there's another one called a partner topic as well. Now, what we're doing in this um, implementation here is the event fires when the file gets created which which triggers this logic app to say a file's been created and the logic app can go and read the file and can process the data into the dataverse that would be a good example of you've built this system this to upload files later along you come along build an interface that reactively listens for the event of files getting created and does something with them so we've got a good decoupling here via the events between this, the web application and the interfaces that process files. Now, one of the problems that you might get, and, and a really common problem with, um, with Dataverse, is you've got throttling over here, so you've got limits on how much you can, or how quickly you can load data into a Dataverse. So one of the things that might be a problem in that previous architecture is, if we're doing the push pattern, um, from event grid the the user here would upload a file but what happens if we have 10,000 users all upload a file at the same time that would fire 10,000 events fairly quickly and that might mean that many logic apps spin up and all try to load data at the same time which might make your your dataverse hit your throttling limits so this is where a good um, pattern can come in so event grid has the ability to push events to multiple destinations so um one of the things you can do is instead of pushing it direct to the logic app we could push it to a queue and the logic app could be getting the messages from a queue where the logic app can control the rate at which it processes messages so let's say 10,000 users upload files but we only upload 10 at a time and then when we're finished we'll go and process the next 10 files and those messages would safely just sit on service bus over here and be worked through at a, at a throttled rate so that would be like a load level and pattern now one thing to note is this this has kind of changed a little bit now with the 
the pull pattern over here so now you can pull from event grid that might change how you implement that and and you might choose not to have service bus in there now so it'll be good to to dig a bit deeper into what those um pull capabilities are for the event grid but um at the minute you've, you've definitely got this out of the box um polling adapter for service bus and when event grid only supported push this would have been a really good way to implement load leveling um hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of in an integration services scenario on azure how you might combine service bus and event grid where you're taking the best of what each offer and you can build a great integration solution thank you for listening today hope you're enjoying the series would love to hear comments about what people are doing do you find the videos useful do you think i've missed any bits any bits we should add to the video um any feedback, hopefully um, this helps everybody out. Thanks.